Hey, what's up, guys? This is Igor, the Go Wine Merchant. Me, my name, man, George Bashara. Uh, check out his great YouTube channel, Wine by the Bay TV. He does a lot of fun stuff. So today's episode, we're going to drink some uh, fun wines, and we're going to discuss Dion Primetime Sanders. Off of a big win this weekend, a win that a lot of people didn't believe in. So we can discuss it. I'll give you my thoughts on it. I, I go pretty deep on this stuff. Let's pour some wine, of course. Uh, and let me give a brief overview. So, all right, yeah, so let's we're do drinking uh, Chianti Classico. All right, guys. So Chianti Classico, uh, that's a region in Tuscany within uh, Italy. Uh, the wines are based on the Sangiovese grape. Uh, so Sangiovese is a fantastic grape. It's mostly known to be in that Tuscan area. A lot of beautiful tart cherry notes. Uh, you know, classic wine for Italian dishes like pizza or a lot of tomato-based pasta. So uh, we have a good one today from Castella di Rada. Uh, and this is from the 2020 vintage. Uh, so, uh, 2020 was considered an excellent year. Uh, you guys, red fruit, kind of earthy characteristics, kind of on the, on the nose. I'm getting a little bit of Nutella too. Yeah. You want to say it's I like it. No. Yeah. I, I it's like fantastic. It. Yeah. We'll put mm -hmm. more details in the description about this wine and the link where you guys can find it on the website. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent wine. Hey, you know what a uh, cool thing about this wine? I'm the only uh, uh, wine merchant on the West Coast to carry this wine. I special ordered this wine, so I want to plug that in. How so, much is that? 25 bucks, man. I know. I know. It's fantastic. I, I mean, know. I know. I might have to buy a bottle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry. Back to the football. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, I think the biggest story in sports right now is the Colorado Buffaloes led by Coach Prime. Uh, so I haven't been watching the sports. You know, I have this business to run. I really don't have uh, time to watch sports. I, the only thing I know about sports is I catch up a little bit about talking heads. I love sports. I just don't watch a lot of sports. And I haven't been watching college football for, forever. Like, it's, there's yeah. a lot going on. So. Yeah, yeah, in college. And you got kids, too, so you got to get them back to school, too. Right, right, right. That, that's why I don't have time. I don't mm -hmm. have time. I don't watch TV until, like, late at night. So at, at that time, it's supposed to watch highlights. In high school and, and, and college, I watched a lot of uh, college football. So I know the sport. It's not like I'm a casual fan. You know, I know the yeah. sport. I got caught up a little bit in this hype. You know, everybody's talking about uh, Dion. I love Dion. Grew up on Dion. Actually, when I first got into football, period, uh, after we you know, immigrated a couple of years after that, I was actually uh, watching, you know, at, at that time, early 90s, the Cowboys and the 49ers, and I'm a 49ers fan. Uh, were the two best teams in, in football. Yeah, but the early 90s, he was still on the Falcons, wasn't he? He, he was on the Falcons. in the mid-90s. Yeah, so there was a big transition in San Francisco when you know Joe Montana was kind of booted out and Steve Young became the quarterback, and he was excellent. But there were two years in a row when uh, the Niners made it to the championship game and they lost to the Cowboys. So they needed to make a big change because, you know, it was becoming embarrassing because, you know, the Niners were kind yeah. of the team of the Every 80s. Every year they would go in and get, and get, get their spin. asses handed to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. By a great, great Dallas team. For sure. And then one year they signed Deion Sanders. That was kind of the antidote. So, oh, my gosh, everybody in the Bay Area was crazy. I, I even have, uh, from that time, I have my red bandana. And I got my high socks. If you oh, remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure Dion style, yeah, he got yeah. the bandana. He's doing the high steps. All the kids wanted to do that thing. So, you know, I love Dion. Then he moved to the Cowboys. Wasn't big of a Dion fan. But as an athlete, he's, you know, second to none. Yeah, I followed him a little bit. I know he started co coaching at, in, like, uh, Division II of Jackson State. And in two years, I think he, he took them to two championships. So, so you and know. now he got to Colorado. And Colorado, uh, they were the worst team in Division I football. They had one win last year, and they, they lost by an average of 30 points. Which yeah, well, is, not only that, they've yeah. been bad for a while now. It's not like they decades, had one yeah. bad season. I mean, yes. they've been bad, like you say, a couple, at least 10, probably closer to 20 years. So, 20 years. So, yeah, not a, not a great program at all. The second worst team in college football, their uh, uh, loss differential was 14 points. Wow. Primetime came in. He changed the whole program around. They said they, they, he brought in like 86 new players. You know, to put your philosophy, your coaching philosophy, that, that's like unheard of. So going into the season, uh, what I saw from Vegas, they said that the team is going to win like 2.7 games. So, you know, I, I was kind of, uh, you know, like listening a little bit. I'm like, you know, Dion, I kind of think, I, I was saying to myself, 
If they lose to TCU, I think they're gonna like a six and six team, which is you know pretty good. If they beat TCU, I think they're gonna win at least nine games. Nine, huh? That's I don't want to take away from their first win. Yes, but I will say this: it's one thing to see a Division two or Division three team play yeah. Yeah. and try and get a coaching philosophy. It's another thing yeah. to see week one, brand new coach, all new talent. You know, you can't really scheme for them yet. Yeah. I want to revisit this topic in about three or four weeks once they've played a few games and they have some film of this particular yeah. team and that particular coach. You're the type of talking head that this, <laughs> this is going to be talking about. All right, so let me – once again. Okay. So I was listening to talking head. This is pregame. All right. So I didn't know what the uh, what the outcome yet of the game is. And then, you know, I was kind of flipping through a lot of YouTube things, and I decided, like, hey, you know what? Let me let me go and see what was uh, Deion Sanders' first – press conference with the team i heard it was kind of controversial mm -hmm. so i wanted to to watch it so i was watching it's about 15 minute uh video and you know he kind of uh, tells them hey i'm gonna bring my uh, uh philosophy here if you guys like it stay if you don't like it go mm -hmm. and he kept saying uh, this phrase i'm coming so he says like uh, uh i'm not here to compete i'm here to win i'm coming um i'm, I'm here to restore uh, uh you know winning ways i'm coming you know uh, uh I'm not a uh, commitment to ads calls. I'm coming. So he started saying that, and you're watching it, and it's kind of like awkward. You're like, he's like, it's, it's kind of, it doesn't quite rhyme. And it's, you know, like I, I was watching on TV, and I was kind of awkward. The, all the players watching it were kind of awkward. So, he, like I said, three or four minutes, he would say like a phrase, and then he'll say, I'm, I'm coming. coming. Yeah. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after the whole thing, after the whole conference, he's like, he's telling all the kids, hey, when people ask you what this uh, uh, meeting was about, tell them just two words I'm coming. So Coach Prime, you know, he's talking about he's not going to be the Buffaloes. You know, he's not called Coach Santa. It's Coach Prime. You know, he's uh, talking to himself in third person. Uh, you know, the, the typical, some would say arrogant. It's more player style than it is coach style. Yes. Yeah. Like that reminds me of Dion the player. Yes. You yes. know, two days before, like the Thursday before Sunday yes. game. Yes. Talking smack, you know, before the before the game. That's what that sounds like to me. Yes. But, you know, what do I know? My interpretation completely changed about that conference after I uh, watched the game. So I actually watched a lot of the first half of the game. Uh, and I was very impressed. You know, I, I was impressed. They were winning. Then I kind of turned it off because, you know, I had to call, uh, come to, to the shop. Uh, and it, it became like a tight game. And they pulled it up at the end. So who they were, they were playing, they were playing TCU. Uh, uh, and TCU... They were ranked number 70 in the country, which is pretty high. But last year, TCU actually played in the championship game. They got destroyed. It was like one of the most embarrassing games. It was like 65 to 7 or something like that. Yeah, I remember. Uh, it was really bad. It, it's really yeah. bad. Yeah. But, you, you know, theoretically, they were the second best team in the, in the country yeah, last wow. year. So, you take uh, Deion Sanders with 86 new players coming from Division Two to play Division One, playing a uh, second best team in the country, you know, you could kind of say theoretically. And they beat them. And you could tell everybody, you know, everybody's jumping the board. Yeah, all, the, all the sheep are, yeah. like, you know, ahead of that. And uh, he's like, but we have more room on it. And, you know, I actually want to say, hey, Coach Prime, if you're watching that and you need a bus driver for We Believe Bus, sign me up. I'm all still right. at the bus stop. Anything? I mean, I saw little bits and pieces, and I thought, like you said, the first quarter they seemed to come out and really take control yes. of the game. And then yes. they kind of, like, gave some back. Um, but, again, week one college football very tough to you know very tough to predict that yeah. forward yeah. into the rest of the season let's see what yeah. these defenses do uh against him you know the following week and the following week and the following week yeah um but i thought it was good that they came out and got that win i think it's important for his image yes. to get that win because those guys got to buy into him you know that's yeah. that's that i'm coming line i'm sure it's something they did in meetings i'm sure he thought about it before the season you know what's our little tag phrase for the year yes or whatever i'm sure you know he's really good at that kind of thing so yeah i think that 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 was important for them to get that win under their belt the first thought when i saw that uh, the day won the game my first thought was they're coming <laughs> that was my initial thought what if tcu is overrated they just choked in the biggest uh, football game and now they choked under the uh, uh, lights again what if they're not that good? What if they beat a team that's not even a twenty-five ranked team? That's kind of the argument. I don't agree with that because yeah. let's say they're let's say they're ranked thirty-four. Yes, Colorado is still an unranked team with a horrible record yes. over the last twenty years. Yes. So that doesn't mean anything to me. Deion Sanders. Oh, Deion not... Sanders generally yeah. as and prime time. What's prime time? What does prime time mean? It annoys me. Well, what is well? Uh, uh, it's as, annoying as, 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 as a Giants fan. Well, as a Giant fan, yeah. as a UM 
alum as yeah. like you know I went New to York University of Miami, Miami yeah. and he was a Seminole and I didn't like that. I didn't I didn't mind him at the Falcons, although I thought he was a little bit of a of a ham sure of a hot both. dog. Yeah, he's a hot dog, but yeah. okay, whatever. That there are a lot of guys back then yeah. and even now that were doing that kind of thing. But when he came to the Niners and then he came to the Cowboys, which I really took offense at. Yes. I got very angry because as a Giants fan, I did not need him in my life. Yes. He was in the NFC, but they really weren't a threat. The, yes. You know, the Atlanta Falcons were not really on anybody's radar, except that they could put up a lot of points on any given Sunday, but they weren't like an overall seasonal threat. Yes. So, but when he went to the Cowboys and the Niners, it really, really burned me. I mean, I couldn't yeah. take it. I wore my Giants hat, not yeah. knowing we were going to talk about this because football is starting up next week. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, I'm never, I've never a big primetime guy. I, I admit that he's a great athlete. Went to, played two ways, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. But I don't like the man personally. I think he's a hot dog, and I don't, I don't particularly care for him. So, well, what do you think prime, prime time means? When the lights are on, he shows up. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly how I interpret it. Prime time. That's. I think that's a television term, right? Prime time is when there's the most eyes on the television. That's where he plays the best. Yeah, unfortunately, you're right. <laughs> I mean, you're right. That's what I thought. I thought his kids kind of showed the same prime time demeanor. When the lights were bright, they showed up. I, I saw some talking heads, and, you know, they were hyperventilating how, how good he was, you know, even more so than I am. They were like, they were, they were like you know what? From now, things are going to change. The athletic directors, uh, you know, like, uh, they're going to uh, start hiring people differently. And my thought was this. Deion Sanders is one of one. Things are going to be different because there ain't no other Deions. There's no other coaches like Deion Sanders. There ain't no other showboaters like Deion Sanders. Well, that's true. He and there ain't one. no other goat wine merchants like you. That's why I wore this hat. You wore that hat, <laughs> I wore this hat. The Go White Merchant, one on one. Deion Sanders, one on one. I thought Kanye West, to me, Kanye West is one on one. Uh, Prince, I thought, was one on one. For sure. Uh, and you love this one, George. Tyson Fury, the heavyweight champ, is one on one. He's a one on one. Yeah, I think so. Who else is one on one? Because my list kind of ended. Oh, oh, no, I, there's plenty of them. Oh, oh yeah. my God. There's I, so many. Marlon Brando. Yes. That's a one on one. Yeah, okay. Yes. You know, okay. Marlon Brando is a great one. I mean, yes. you know, there's a bunch yeah. of them. I don't want to get into a great. big long list, but I think if you really think yeah. hard, but you got to be discerning, like you did it, yeah. you know, very discerning. Yeah. I don't think Pacino is one of -on one. He's a supreme talent, yes, but he's not a one of -on one. I don't know if Michael Jackson one on one. I you don't think so. I thought about it, but I didn't put it on my I'm list. I'm surprised. It's so, and, and it's something to do with. Uh, so I don't know Mind about you, I'm not a Michael Jackson person. You know, Jerry Rice is you know a fantastic receiver. I don't think he's one on one. No, but I, I get your point. Yeah, he's a one of one guy. You're not going to go to every showboater right. and give him a college team and go, oh, okay, here you go. I mean, I don't care how talented. Look, well, look. Yeah, here's a perfect example. Yes. Okay, Magic Johnson was a coach yes. in the NBA for what yes. four or five seasons. Yeah, one season. Okay, uh, maybe two. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, great player. Yes. Lousy coach. Okay, same thing with Michael Jordan. You want to talk about one of one? Yes. Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant are ones of ones. Okay. Okay, those two, well, maybe two of, two of one. Okay. Uh, one of two, rather. You yeah. know, but elite, elite talent and work ethic like nobody's Yes, business. and work ethic, yes. And those yes. guys cannot coach because they cannot understand what it is to be average. That's kind of and that's uh, where Dion is different because it seems like he's able to communicate with the average player yes. or the above average player, even though he is personally an elite talent. Yeah, and that's hard to do. So yeah, so that you know that's kind of uh, how I, I came across you know one on one, and, and you, know, you it's funny you you mentioned that because there's a lot of like this uh, uh, talk in college right now about college actually getting paid. NIL is a big like thing. I don't I don't quite get NIL name image likeness yeah but somehow uh, you want to get paid but even see, he said during the conference he's like i want you guys to think about nfl not nil and the way i took it uh, is, is that you guys are thinking small nil you want to capitalize on your image like in this moment in time you're not focusing on the big picture that you could be a grand superstar if you put in the work because when you focus on nil you're not focusing on nfl i think that's i don't think that's mutually exclusive if you want to say that about michael jordan yeah Yes. Not everybody's Michael Jordan. Not everybody's Deion Sanders. In fact, the statistics show that most players that make it even to Division I college and start yes. have average NFL careers if they're lucky. If they're lucky, most of them don't even make it to the NFL. So I can see why someone that knows they have college-level yes. talent yes. 
puts in the hard work yes. to be the best college player he can be, but still hires a team yes. to promote his brand so he has some money coming out of school yes. and he can build a business or a life or whatever around that money and that image of likeness. I, I, I think that's a miss. I, I think that, uh, what you're saying is theoretically correct. I don't think that's what he's saying uh, from uh, his experience. Where he said like 95% of you guys are not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. so, so focus on education. Like he said, maybe five of you percent will even make it to the NFL. That's what he meant. NIL, like, you know, if you're a nobody, why would you get NIL like deals at all? Well, so he's talking about the five percenters, I think. But the five percenters, I, I don't agree with you. You're like, oh, you could do this and this. No, you cannot do it. You have to focus on football. Yeah, you can't you focus do. NIL. But, you know, no. some of these players have family. Yes. Okay. Yes. You can get your mom, your right. dad, your uncle, your right. grandma, whatever, to work with a PR team. Yes. To they focus on the NIL and you focus on school and playing. The point is to learn how to do hard work, not to make it to the NFL. I think that's the point. Okay. The point, if you do hard work, you're going to be successful whatever else you do. Well, that's true. I think that's true. So so that's where, where I think uh, we see it. But I was, you know, I was thinking about that. And, and you know, I was like, uh, uh, I was thinking like, Ole, because I was so impressed with that win. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, man, I understood. Uh, uh, and I'm going to tie it back to, to, the, to the conference, what he's talking about. I kind of understood history through that game and, and i will explain to you i don't get that uh, let me. me explain to you all yeah, right, all right. Do. this is a, this is the phrase you, you maybe you'll fill me in uh, on this phrase okay. some dude said this i came i saw i conquered that's the thoughts that popped into my mind okay one up one <laughs> i thought of that phrase and i was like oh he's coming that's what i thought now I think the whole landscape is scared of Deion Sanders the way the landscape was scared of Alexander the Great. He's coming. They know it. It's a psychological fear. I don't oh, agree. oh, I, oh, I'm, I'm on the bus. I'm the bus driver. One go to another. Okay, so, fine. Alexander the Great. You think Deion's gonna like this one? Like, let, let's get this. Dion, Dion will like it. Yeah. Dion will like it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I, I completely and totally disagree. go wine merchant. I don't think go they're football scared. play. What? I don't think the rest of the league is scared. No, nope. they are scared. That's why I said nine, nine wins, at least nine wins. Mark the time and day. And what you need to do is at, once you see this video in a couple of weeks, when they're not nine and six yes. or 10 and whatever, I don't remember. No, they only play like 12 or 13 games. Sorry. So like okay, nine, so yeah. nine, and, nine and three or nine and four or whatever it is, you go back in the comments mm -hmm. and you laugh at this man, okay? There's a link in the comments. Yeah. Below, go down there and laugh at this man because I guarantee you, I'm telling you this right now. Yes, this is for the camera of two. Yeah, he's not getting a nine. And I'm then, not saying he'll never get to nine, he's not getting to nine. He might get a lot to of six. comments are gonna be like, He's coming. No, nope. that's what the comments I don't care be what like. they say. Yeah, six it. wins max. That's my yeah. that's my hot take, bro. You should week do feathers. one in college. How many times I gotta tell you, week one in college, it's like preseason, week two preseason in the NFL. National champs runner-ups at home. They were playing in that stadium, in, in the National Champ Stadium, under 100 degree weather with 86 new players. And guess what? How many penalties did they commit? Not a lot. Six. Not a lot. No, that's big. Which is tiny. No, no, no. that's huge. Tiny. I'll give you that. That is huge. That is focused. Too team. many teams beat themselves that way. And if you can eliminate penalties, you got a lot of wins on your belt just yeah. just by accident. If you guys are into football, start listening to all the coaches. Now you're going to hear a lot of fun double talk. Oh, there'll be some double talk. You know why? Because he's scared. They're scared because he's coming. Don't forget, if you agree with him, leave a comment in the comment section. If you agree with me, wait until he makes a mistake and then leave a yeah. comment in the comment section. I'm telling you, I'm right. And, and make sure to uh, you know, forward this to all your friends on this hot take. None of the talking heads on TV, you know, the sheep. None of them are taking, uh, having a uh, hot take like this. And they're certainly not drinking wine while they do yeah, it. Yeah, one of one. Exactly. Right. Cheers. Indeed. What channel are we on? We have Binance Reverie TV, guys. Uh, and then make sure to pick up this wine. It's fantastic. And don't forget to come to the tastings if you're in the area, right? Yes, every Friday and Saturday. We do fun stuff. That's what The Go does. I specialize in wine. Dion Sanders specializes in conquering the world.